Welcome to Brave Church. Happy Easter. We're so glad you're joining us and tuning in today. We're going to sing out some songs of worship to our resurrected King. Come on.
Welcome to Brave Church. It is so good to worship with you online this Easter Sunday. If you're new to church or this is your first time tuning in, we're so glad that you're here. Our goal here is simple, to be the kind of church that Jesus came to start. A church where followers of Jesus can grow as they follow him, and those who are seeking and exploring faith can test the waters and learn more. Uh, wherever you're at on that spectrum, we are so glad that you're here with us today. Um, so we're going to begin with a story, okay? There is an ancient legend that speaks of God's struggle to guide the destiny of humanity. It said that God had grown tired of the way that mortals consistently lost their way, creating disasters as they go. So he sent out his angelic messengers to build a great library that would house all the wisdom that he deemed valuable to his creation, instructing them how to live and act in the world. When the great task was complete, the colossal library stood proudly in one of the world's great cultural capitals, dominating the skyline. However, this huge building contained too many books for any individual to read. It was all but impossible to reach for the majority of people and the library's sheer size was enough to put anyone off even entering it. So God instructed his couriers to compress the essential wisdom into a single encyclopedia book. Once completed, this work was widely circulated, but the manuscript was so huge that one could hardly lift it, let alone read it or put what it said into practice. So yet again, God put his couriers to work, crafting a booklet with all of the essential information but the people were lazy, and there were many who could not read. So the booklet was refined into a single word. And that word was sent out on the lips and the life of a messenger. And that word was love. Not a rom-com, make you feel good, do what I, I hope you'll do kind of love. No, today we celebrate love in its truest form the kind of love that we need the most. Today we celebrate that when love was murdered, unjustly crucified and placed in a tomb, love didn't die. It came back to life. Love has a name and its name is Jesus. Love is a person and his name is Jesus. Love is the solution and the solution is Jesus. Happy Resurrection Day, the greatest day in history. Today we celebrate love because Jesus came back to life and love conquers all. I wanna share a word with you that I believe is a timely message for us this Easter. But before we do that, I wanna begin with a word of prayer. God, thank you so much for this life that you've given us, that all that you uh, have done in our lives, that, thank you for your faithfulness this last year. When there was so much that that, that we could be distracted by when there are so many things that are not right in this world. God, today, we choose to place our focus on you and let you be magnified. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, we're gonna talk about Jesus. But you know, the truth is, not very many people have a hard time with Jesus. They tend to have a hard time with his church. And so let's talk about that for a second. One of the biggest misconceptions of the Christian faith is that being loved by God is all about our personal effort. As if God waits for us to clean up or get our act together before he decides if he's gonna love us. And we don't say that, like most churches don't literally preach that message, but the implication can still be felt. And it goes a lot like this, hey, hey, fix your behavior so I can feel comfortable with you. Tra translation, you'll be accepted as long as you act right. Which is kind of crazy when you think about it because it's so opposite of what Jesus did. I mean, I mean, Jesus, right? While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So the goal of the church isn't to make bad people good. Jesus didn't come to make it harder to belong. He came to make a way for all of us to join his family. Jesus came to pay a price for our sins so that everyone would have the opportunity to join God's family. And so the question is, how does he do that? 
And, and not just one time for himself or for the people that he was friends with or that he knew, but how does he do that throughout history? How does he do that for our lives? How does God bring death to life for you and me? Romans 8 is one of the best Easter verses. I love this verse. It says, and if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, then he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies because of his spirit who lives in you. See, you don't just celebrate Easter. We experience Easter. If you're a follower of Jesus, the same power that raised Jesus from the dead lives in you. So so if what you're going through isn't bigger than a dead Jesus in the grave with guards around the tomb, then with Jesus, you can make it through. And instead of going from life to death, we can now go from death to life. The resurrection of Jesus gives us the power to close the gap between the life we're living and the one that God created us for. Um, C.S. Lewis, the Christian writer and British novelist, I, I love this quote from him. It's one of my favorites. He says, Easter is death working backwards. Easter's death working backwards. And that's, that's our hope this Easter that this Easter gathering would start a process of reversing death in our lives, that it, would, that it would create a moment that marks your life, that encourages you, that gives you a fresh start. This is a, a really great moment, a great opportunity for all of us to pause and to ask ourselves this very important question. Are you experiencing more and more life or more death? Which way is your life headed? Uh, maybe you've been following Jesus for a while, but, but it doesn't feel like you're headed towards more life right now. But listen, there's hope. And it's not just looking good on the outside. It's heart change from the inside. There are some things that Jesus calls us to that he wants us uh, to continue moving towards life if we do these things throughout our lives. But, but if we wanna get there, then, then we've gotta commit to the process. And, you know, it's no mystery that there are a lot of people joining us online and, and even in, in person this weekend that don't go to church every Sunday, that aren't regular church goers. Maybe you don't consider yourself a Christian. Hey, we love that you are here with us right now. And, but here's what I would ask you to consider. If your life isn't moving towards more and more of that life, if you, if you feel more like, man, I, I feel dead on the inside, I wanna challenge you. Give yourself just one year. Go all in here at Brave Church. Just try it and see what God does with that kind of commitment. I mean, you've already tried the opposite, right? You've already tried it or everything else or whatever else you've tried. If you haven't tried this, I challenge you. Try that this year. Today, we're gonna talk about the first step in the process. All the change that we need in our lives starts by doing this one thing first, and that is to trust in Jesus. This whole death to life process in your life starts with trust in Jesus. There's no other starting point and there's no more foundational thing that we come back to as followers of Jesus. If you're taking notes, trusting in Jesus means this. Number one, no matter how bad things get with God, it's never too late. No matter how bad things get with God, it's never too late. Well, we need to believe that no matter what, It's not over. So so many think it's over, you know, it's too late. My dreams can't come true anymore. My relationships or my reputation is ruined. You might be looking at some stuff in your life right now and you're thinking, I don't know if I can fix this. Well, you probably can't. Maybe it's more than you can handle. Trust in Jesus. It's never over with the God who raises the dead. That's what Easter's all about. With God, it's never too late. That's a biblical principle. By our human ability, once dead on the cross, put in a grave, in a tomb, it's over. But with God, it's never too late. Death can come to life. There was a time in the early church where they started to struggle to believe because things got so hard. And look what they said. This is in 2 Corinthians chapter 1. It says, We do not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, about the troubles that we experienced in the province of Asia. We were under great pressure, far beyond our ability to endure, so that we despaired of life itself. 
Indeed, we felt that we had received the sentence of death. But this happened that we might not rely on ourselves, but on God who raises the dead. People of faith throughout the Bible, they didn't always have the answers, but they trusted God. They weren't particularly special people. They weren't exceptionally moral. They, they didn't have superpowers. They just trusted in what God could do. One of the most famous people in the Bible is literally known because of his trust in God. And his name was Abraham. He, he was known as the father of faith. Look what it says about him in, in Romans. It says, as it is written, I've made you a father of many nations. He is our father in the sight of God in whom he believed. The God who gives life to the dead and calls into being things that were not. Do you trust Jesus? See, see many of us have trusted at some point in our lives, but then life happens. And when things start happening and we start thinking, man, this one might be too big for God. Or when we start forgetting what God did once in our lives, way back when. Over, over time, some of us lose faith. Maybe some of you started losing faith this last year. That's why Easter is so important. It's a reminder that even if some battles have been lost, the war is and will be won. Maybe you didn't feel like a winner this year. Maybe you lived through some death. Some death in your marriage, death in your finances, emotional or mental health, uh, maybe death of dreams or death of uh, losing your job. Listen, it's not over if you trust in Jesus. In fact, did you know that besides coming back to life himself, Jesus actually raised someone else back to life before he did it. Jesus actually brought someone else from death to life before he went to the cross. And we can learn so much. I mean, this, it's an amazing story. It's in John chapter 11. We're gonna look at this today because there's so much that we can learn from it about what it means to trust in Jesus. Let's begin John chapter 11, verse one. It says, now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sister sent word for Jesus saying, Lord, the one you love is sick. And when he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory that God's son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was for two more days. Now in verse three, notice the sisters didn't say, the one who loves you right? They appealed to Jesus about the one he loves. Um, here we see something so amazing uh, about God and his heart for people. Uh, right there through Jesus and Lazarus' friendship, we see a pattern that God is motivated to love us. Not because we deserve it, not because we're like the best friend. Like, no, they knew that Jesus loved Lazarus. They knew that he would want to come because of his love for him. He simply loves us. But how motivated is Jesus? Okay, look, look what happens right in, in verse six. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was for two more days. It, like Jesus didn't seem in a rush to help his friend out. What's up with that, right? Uh, maybe you're struggling because you need Jesus to do something right now. And Jesus is taking his holy time. And have you ever felt like that, right? Like God, you're missing your moment What's up with this delay? Like, God, come on. Like, I wonder it, it, what that did for your trust. What did that do to your faith? See, many times God doesn't go at the speed that we want him to, but that's okay because we don't always move at the speed he wants us to either. It's funny how we can get so frustrated expecting God to act immediately when it can take us days, months, or even years to do what God asks of us. God cares more about who we are when we get to the finish line than how fast we get there. And so look what happens for Lazarus. It says, after he had said this, he went on to tell them, our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I'm going there to wake him up. His disciples replied, Lord, if he sleeps, well, he'll, he'll get better. 
Jesus had been speaking of his death, but his disciples thought that he meant natural sleep. And so then he told them plainly, guys, Lazarus is dead. And for your sake, I'm glad I was not there so that you may believe. But let us go to him. And so then Thomas said to the rest of the disciples, let us also go that we may die with him. Number two, if you're taking notes, write this down. Trusting in Jesus means that we can trust God's plan when we don't understand. We can trust God's plan when we don't understand. Uh, In verse 15, notice that Jesus has a plan and they did not understand it, right? Like Jesus says, "When when I'm through with this, everyone will say, Jesus, you knew what you were doing. Like, wow, we get it. You may have a situation right now that seems to be going wrong, way wrong, and maybe you're becoming very discouraged. So we, we don't always understand why stuff happens and why God doesn't seem to be, to be doing what we need him to do. Well, in, in verse 16, you know, this is what Thomas is feeling, right? Thomas, he goes, let's just, let's just go and die with Lazarus. <laughs> like, let's just go die with him. Uh, turn to somebody, if you're watching with somebody, just say, what? Like, chill, bro. That, that is so dramatic, Thomas. Like, we, we miss the guy, but let's not all go die with it, right? Uh, but we do the same thing sometimes when we get discouraged, right? Doubt is just as contagious as trust. M- maybe you can think of a time that you got caught up in your, your doubt or your fear of what was happening. Maybe this last year, just thinking back. Doubt that God was with you. Doubt that God is who he says he is. With, with so much evil going on, doubt that God cares about you. We can get so caught up in doubt, especially when we're around doubtful people. You know, maybe you've heard the saying, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Well, in the kingdom of God, it's more like this, show me the faith of your friends and I'll show you your future. Over and over throughout throughout the Bible, we see how faith-filled people together changed the world, impacted the lives of so many people. This is one of the reasons that we believe in brave groups. Brave groups are where we live life together. It's a place to find spiritual community where our trust in Jesus can be strengthened. If you're someone that's in that category that's like, you know what, I've never tried it, but I'm gonna go all in this year with God. I'm gonna go all in and commit to a church. Part of that journey, just it has to be joining a brave group. Because there are things that God wants to do for you that you can only find in community. And one of the fastest ways to find that community is through joining a brave group. So I just really want to encourage you to consider that this year. Let's continue, verse 17. It says, on his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem and many Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Lord, Martha said to Jesus, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you whatever you ask. I love her faith. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I I know he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Notice in verse 17, it says that Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb for four days. What's what's the significance of that? In Jesus's day, Jews believed that the soul hovers over the body for three days. And by the fourth day, it's really over. And, and this is huge because how many of us lose hope the moment we feel something is over? The moment we feel like it's dead? Like, okay, God really must have not had a plan, all right? Like, look what happened. It's way too late. As if our God has no ability to revive. We worship a resurrecting God. But you know, we're human and, and we struggle with doubt. And we struggle with fear. Look at, look at verse 20. Look at, look at Mary's response. Mary stayed home. <laughs> she was grieving. I mean, her brother had just died. She was, ready. She, was, she was ready to lose hope, right? I mean, there was just nothing that could be done about it at this point. And she didn't understand Jesus' plan. 
Have you noticed when you're really in your feelings and the emotion of whatever bad stuff is happening or whatever's really getting you down, have you noticed how easy it is to give up on God? How easy it is to say, I'm not even gonna try anymore, I'm just gonna stay home. Some here today, you've given up, but Jesus hasn't given up on you. He continues to offer his help. He still wants you in his family. He still invites you to join in his mission. Will you trust in Jesus? Last point, number three. Because of Jesus, death is not the end. Death is not the end. The resurrection is more than an event. The resurrection is a person and his name is Jesus. Will we join his family? If you really want to celebrate Easter the way that God intended, it's not just about remembering what Jesus did, but take to heart that because of what Jesus did, if we accept it, death is not the end. I read a story recently about a man who had a heart attack, which resulted in bypass surgery. And then a few months later, he met up with a friend for breakfast and, you know, he got his usual waffles and, and whatever, and he starts throwing butter on his waffles. And his friend said, hey, hey, didn't they tell you to stop eating butter? Like, that's not good for your heart. And he said, well, you know, when I was being wheeled into the operating room, I had a smile on my face. And I realized that if this is the end, I had a fabulous life. And his friend's like, well, what does that have to do with waffles, uh, putting butter on your waffles? And, and then he replied, well, I've already had a great life. Everything from here is just a bonus. So I'm putting butter on my waffles. You know, what, what an incredible place to get to in life. If we're being honest, not very many people do to be at such peace with death. If you were to die tomorrow, to be able to say, I've lived a full life. That's a beautiful picture. But you know what? It's not enough. Following Jesus means more than just being at peace with death because of how good your life was. If you feel you've lived a good life and you die, it's still over. But if you live a good life with Jesus, death is just the beginning. When we decide to follow Jesus, death isn't the final say. This life is actually leading up to something. And what we do here and now will affect our eternity. If we join God's family and we learn to live by his values. Love, joy, peace, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. You might think I am so far from being the poster person of all of those things. That's okay. That's not what Jesus asks of you before he accepts you. No, this is, a, this is an open invitation. He's gonna change some stuff over time. He's gonna reshape your heart, but it's not a requirement. Remember, Jesus didn't come to make it harder to get into his family. He came to invite you and make a way for all to join if they choose. Even for those who would say that they lived a good life, death can be so much more than a good ending. With Jesus, death becomes a graduation into, into more life. This is eternal life. You don't have to figure it all out. There's just one thing that he asks of us. The starting point to all that God wants to do for you is to trust in Jesus. On December 23rd, 2019, my papa passed away. Um, his earthly body that had been fighting an aggressive cancer was finally done fighting. He, he was diagnosed just three months before and as things progressed, we took every opportunity to visit him. And I'll never forget on, on one of my last visits to see him, the hospital called and they gave us the news that basically let us know that there was nothing that they could do. They sent a hospice nurse out to set him up with some heavier pain medications and try to make him more comfortable. And then as the nurse was leaving, she asked him, I'll never forget this, she, she said, should I arrange for a minister to come and see you? And my papa, he pointed to me and he said, my grandson is my pastor. After she left, he, he turned and he asked me, he said, Samuel, do you think heaven is real? And feeling the weight of that moment and the emotion of it, I felt so unprepared. All I could think to say was, 
yes, I believe in heaven. And since you trust in Jesus, I believe you're going there. In the moment, that didn't feel like enough of an answer. But now I look back on it and I know that it was more than enough. See, see I wasn't prepared to debate the existence of heaven and that wasn't what he was looking for. He, he lived a good life and he followed Jesus. See, all, all he needed was me to speak from a place of conviction and assure him with power that my trust is in Jesus. There is a power in where you place your trust. Ephesians, it says, I pray that you will begin to understand how incredibly great his power is to help those who believe in him. The same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead. Don't let Easter be just another holiday. Let Easter be an experience that changes everything about your life. Would you bow your heads and pray with me? If you're ready to go all in and trust Jesus for the first time, agree with this prayer as I pray it. Dear God, I need you. I want a real relationship with you. Today, I open my life to knowing you, to trusting you, to learning what it means to trust you with my whole heart. Today, I invite Jesus to be Lord of my life. Jesus, I wanna know you. I wanna put my faith in you. I want the power of God in my life. Today, I choose you. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hey, did you know that if you made that decision today for the first time, not only are we all celebrating with you, but all, the Bible says all of heaven is celebrating with you. They're throwing a party. This is a joyous day. And my hope is that we can walk with you now on this journey. And speaking of that, I wanna share with you just a couple of next steps before we continue in a time of worship. Um, we're gonna take a survey, an Easter survey. We, uh, we're gonna start doing this um, probably once a year. It's just a great way for us to find out more of how we can serve you better. And so there's a couple questions. There's a link in the bio and, and uh, on the website. But there's a couple questions that we want to ask. The first is, I'd like to hear a message on what the Bible says about. Um, this just helps me as I study and pray about our teaching calendar and some of the things that we're going to cover, questions or, or topics that you might want to hear more on. You know, I'll still pray and, and make a decision on what I feel like God is leading me to, but this would be really helpful. And then the second one is I'm interested in hearing more about these themes. And so that's just another way to answer the question. If there's some specific themes that you'd love to hear about, that'd be really helpful. And then lastly, and maybe one of the most important things is, is the next step in my spiritual journey is, and there, there's a bunch of stuff under there that you can look at, uh, but we're a next step church because there are always next steps in following Jesus. And so the moment we stop taking next steps is probably the moment that we've lost our way or maybe even stopped following because Jesus is always leading us somewhere. And so just some of the next steps um, that I wanna help make you aware of if you're not here at Brave is, you know, if you decided to follow Jesus next weekend, baptism, that's an awesome next step. Uh, the Bible uh, says to do that as soon as you decide to follow Jesus. And so we'd love to water baptize you and celebrate if you're local. Also, welcome to Brave if you wanna find out more about getting connected um, or if you're interested in joining a serving team um, or if you want to join a Brave group. And those are just some of them. There's a bunch of options there. If you'd fill that out, that would really help us and we would love to walk with you. Well, hey, let's continue in our time of worship.
search the world And it couldn't fill me And man's empty praise And treasures the fame Are never enough Then you came along And you put me back together and every desire is now satisfied Hearing your love Oh, there's nothing better than you There's nothing better than you There's nothing, nothing is better than you
Hey, Brave Church, thanks for worshiping with us today. Happy Easter. We feel so honored that you chose to join us. Uh, we love you and we appreciate you. If you want to contribute to our church and the cause here, as we are reaching so many people for the gospel and impacting so many lives, we really appreciate your giving. Um, you can do that with the links. And uh, hey, we hope to see you next week. And if you're local, join us next Sunday for Baptism Sunday.